<laughs> if your picture appears in it, you get a book free. Uh, I, some of you aren't going to be too, too prompt, you know what I mean? Maybe, uh, maybe uh, in the background or so. But if your picture is in it, uh, you need to check with me. Say, hey Dana, I've got a book coming free. <laughs> okay. um, I know for a fact that Terry is in it, John is in it. Um, Pat's in it. Um, Joy Voorhees, I think, is in it. And uh, possibly one other person. We'll just have to check. And so, I uh, just want to make sure you all know. Somehow, when I was putting the book together, I was looking for photographs showing people doing things with their hives or doing certain uh, ways they put their hives up on stands. Uh, What's the name of your book? It's called uh, Beekeeping 101 Handbook and Guide for Beginners. Cool. So Brad Pruitt is in it. So uh, I will get you, uh, uh, some of you are named, <coughs> Terry, a couple of your photographs have been used and I've given you photo credit for it. Uh, and maybe for each photo credit, you ought to have a book. Huh? <laughs> uh, okay, tonight what we're going to do is uh, kind of follow up on an idea. Uh, Bill Valentine Cooper, Cooper. Bill, come on up here. Uh, is a researcher, and this is one of the most valuable things about all of us. We bring something to this bee yard, and we all contribute something. And so we want to invite anybody that's got ideas or things that you'd like to try here to do it. Bill, uh, I brought you the show and tell type thing. You want to grab that, Bill, and we'll introduce it and then let you go. Yeah, what I bring to the group is questions. <laughs> no, no, no. Bill brings great ideas. Uh, I gave a talk in Connecticut. And I was kind of boohooing the fact that a lot of beginning beekeepers buy anything under the sun, most of it's worthless. And there's a vendor selling this thing, and evidently he took it to heart. Because he came to me after my talk and said, Dana, would you give this thing a try? You know, because uh, he claims it works. It, it takes the moisture from your hive, moisture rises, condenses on the metal sheet, and runs out these tubes. Well, I mean, I wasn't terribly impressed, but I don't turn anything down if somebody wants to give it to me free either. <laughs> and so I brought this in, and uh, Bill says, hey, I would like to, uh, you know, see if it really does work. And so, Bill, it is your project, and you can describe what you're doing, and I would like to see you write an article yeah, I'll, on uh, what's going on. I'm in the process of writing, but I kind of uh, tried to hurry up and finish putting this together so we could have something to put on the hives for the winter. Uh, as Dina says, uh, what the vendor intends to happen here is this will be on the top of your hives for the winter, just underneath the telescope and cover. And uh, as the bees are respirating and doing their stuff in the winter, the warm air is going to rise and be humid, and uh, sometimes that causes problems in the hive if there's too much moisture. Uh, so what they've uh, decided they would give a shot to here is a method of getting the, the uh, moisture out of the air that's in the hive. Uh, what they intend is for, if, with this on the top, this is going to be cooler up here than it is on the inside. So water is going to condense from the air on this curved surface here. Uh, roll down the sides and into little troughs, you can see. It just, metal just curves up and around so that the water can run through that. And then one end is a slightly higher, the other end's a slightly lower, and you need to watch that when you put it on the hive to make sure you maintain that slope. So it'll run down and go out the tubes one way or the other. Uh, the way they have it set up right now, it'd be coming out this end. So uh, we thought that this might work, I and mean, it looks like it's a reasonable idea, but we wanted to see how much it would affect the moisture level and the temperature in the hive. So uh, what I did to modify it was uh, I cut a hole in the side here where the handle was and put in two panes of plexiglass, one on the inside and one on the outside, so that I've got a little bit of insulation there and won't get moisture uh, condensing on the inside of the glass to prevent me from looking in. 
And then in there, I put uh, a little device that measures the and displays the humidity and the temperature. And I put a fresh battery in it uh, for the winter. Uh, and uh, when I put it in there, I made sure that I didn't cover all the uh, holes it uses to, to measure the temperature and humidity. So I did that right. So. But uh, what I expect we'll be able to do is over the winter, uh, maybe every couple days, come and write down uh, on a separate log, so we have to put up the hive, what we see in terms of temperature and humidity levels here. Now what we'll compare that to is a uh, shallow that uh, I gave the same treatment. It hasn't got the piece of balloon in it, it's not going to do the condensation bit, it's not going to drain water out of there. So what we'll see here is the, the humidity and the temperature without the extra equipment that, that vendor thinks is going to make a, a big difference. Uh, so we're going to put these on two hives that are hopefully of similar strength. And like I said, record the information over the winter, uh, see how well the hives do. If, if one of them dies and the other doesn't, then maybe it's having a serious effect. If we start seeing uh, raining, when we look in the window there in this one, then we know that uh, we might want to have that on all of our hives. Uh, the last little bit of it, uh, is a, uh, a bit of screen that came with this to keep the bees from going up into that area and propolizing everything. Uh, and since I only have one, I'm just using some uh, uh, fiberglass screen here on the other one. Uh, talked to Dana about it and he's assured me that they won't propolize that completely shut at least over the winter. So uh, what we're going to do is just pop those on tonight and start recording the information. Does anybody have any ideas or questions or concerns about what we're going to do? On the inside cover, what's that? Should we have a notebook on the inside cover that would record observations that people are making? I don't. I don't think we should put it there because uh, when we open up we the hive all winter long, yeah, it'd be a real problem. So uh, I live just about five blocks away here, and I'll be able to come over fairly often. Uh, and maybe I could uh, set up some kind of container outside here, you know, a steel great. container sure. that we could keep our log book in, so that anybody we'll else who comes with by. Just a brick on top will work. What's that? Just something like Tupperware with a brick on top of work. Yeah, that's a good gallon, idea. Gallon jar, stick that yeah. the fence. Or even okay. the rain. Okay. Yeah. And anytime anybody comes by here and feels inspired, I'd love it if you would write down. I'll, I'll make it a form so you can see what I'm looking for. But you know, <laughs> essentially, when you did the observation, what you came up with, and any thoughts that you have about what you're seeing. Uh, you know, one another thing, bit of information might be helpful would be what are the weather conditions at the time they took yeah. yeah. Good point. Well, it kind of ties in with the other thing I was hoping to do, and I haven't got that set up here. Uh, and that was put some of those oven thermometer probes I was talking about in earlier meetings. Some of the hives will be able to get external temperature and internal temperature then, and that'll be a part of the information that we can record. I'll mm -hmm. be able to graph this all out, and we'll see, uh, like I said, we'll see what we see. Uh, part of research is uh, gathering the data and then trying to make sense of it later on, so we're going to do the first part <laughs> gather the data. Did you calibrate these two? Uh, yeah, they're within plus or minus one degree. Uh, unfortunately, they're both going in opposite directions right now, so they're probably two degrees <laughs> off. And what about humidity? And the humidity is the same way. Uh, is there anything that anybody thinks I've forgotten? I mean, I'm, I'm certainly no expert here. And Yeah, please. What about out, outside temperature? Uh, I'm hoping that with the oven thermometer probes, we're going to have one in and one out, that we, we can get an outside temperature recording at pretty much the same time. Uh, I didn't want to build anything onto this uh, because it needs to be sheltered from the weather. I didn't know whether we were going to have a separate thermometer. Well, yeah, I, I think what time. I'll end up doing is, is just shoving those probes of those thermometers into maybe, maybe one probe in each of these two hives and then a couple in other places and other hives. I want to have probably four or five in the hives uh, that Susan and I have about a mile from here. So that'll be recording temperatures in various places in the hives too as a completely separate experiment. I want to see if I can tell where the bee ball is, how it's moving, and how it dwindles over the uh, winter. Uh, and if I can get uh, some good information from that, then maybe just one probe at the right place on a hive to tell the general health of the colony. 